Hello, children of God. What do you want to be when you grow up? When you become an adult and move out on your own, what kind of job do you think that you might like to have? Maybe you want to be a chef and make wonderful things and cook for everybody. That could be fun. Or perhaps you're going to be a coach. And you're going to tell people on the athletic field what to do. Kind of to think of it, this could also be a train conductor hat, couldn't it? Or, you know, maybe you're going to be a soldier and serve your country. Or maybe you're going to work on a ranch and have a bunch of cows and horses and be kind of like a, a cowboy. Or maybe you'll start your own YouTube channel and be a YouTuber. Who knows? There's probably a lot of things that you might want to do. But what you do is not who you are. Your job is not the most important part about you. I'll tell you the most important part about you. But first, I want to talk about Jesus. Now, what did he do when he was alive on earth? Well, he did a lot of things, and he made the most significant difference in the entire universe, of course, but he started out as a carpenter. So he worked with, with wood and stuff. His hammer probably did not look like this, by the way, but you know, he started out as a, as a carpenter. Now, he worked with a lot of fishermen, and he was usually pretty good at helping them find the fish, so it makes me wonder how good a fisherman they were. But those are our jobs, but there are other ways that we describe Jesus, ways that he even described himself. For instance, he said, I am the good shepherd. Jesus was the good shepherd who takes care of his sheep. But speaking of sheep, we also call him the lamb of God. So he was the shepherd. And in a sense, he was also kind of like a sheep because he was the sacrifice given for us. Well, Jesus also calls himself the light of the world. So he shines like a light. This is not a good hair day for me. And he also called himself the bread of life. So he gives us life. He sustains us and fuels us. But there's something else that Jesus was. He was the king. Now, this was used kind of as an insult to Jesus. See, when, when he was getting charged, when people were trying to come up with, with mean things to say about him before they crucified him, the, the person questioned him said, are you a king? People say you're a king. And then they made fun of him because they said he was the king of the Jews. They even put a crown of thorns on his head. And then when they crucified him above his cross, they wrote as his crime, king of the Jews. So they weren't looking up to him in glory for that kingship. But Jesus knew that his kingdom was not of this world, that he was not sent to be an earthly king. See, some people thought he was. Some people thought that he was going to take control of the government and rule over people like a king on earth would do. But that's not the kind of king Jesus is. He is the king of everything, the king of kings and lord of lords. He is the king not just of earth. He's the king of heaven. He has a heavenly kingdom, and we belong to that heavenly kingdom. In fact, that brings us back to the most important thing about you. The most important thing about you is not what you do, what career you choose, but the fact that you are a child of the king, that you are God's sons and daughters, that he is the king and ruler, and you are the heirs of that throne. That means we get to inherit heaven one day, and that we will have a crown of our own, in a sense. It won't look like this, but we are children of the king. And Jesus wants to be king, not of this world, king of heaven and king of our hearts. When we recognize a ruler, a very important person or a king, usually you give them a lot of respect, and you note that there's someone very important. Well, it should be that way and even more with Jesus. He's the most important person, or he should be 
the most important person in your life. And you should honor him as king, as father, and as ruler of your life, remembering that he conquered sin and death, that he has won that victory, and that he is on a heavenly throne, and that one day he will come for us. And we will be with him forever. One day we'll be with him in heaven, in his heavenly kingdom. Right now, he's still with us because he's given us his presence and his promise that he is with us. So we recognize that he is with us, that he is the king, that he is the most important thing. And that's the most important thing for you. No matter what else you do and what else you choose, you are a child of the king and no one and nothing can take that away from you. Well, why don't we say a prayer and thank God as we ask him to be king of our hearts. Dear God, thank you for Jesus, the king. Help us to put him first, to honor you always. Thank you that we are your sons and daughters and that we can be with you. Thank you for loving us. We love you, God. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, have a wonderful celebration of Christ the King Sunday when we celebrate that Jesus is Lord and King. Hopefully this gives you one more idea of how to celebrate that and how to explain the importance that Jesus is the King and always will be, no matter what. As always, we have new videos coming out weekly with craft ideas and messages, so if you haven't already done so, feel free to like and subscribe. Hope this helps you and is a blessing to your ministry, wherever, however, and whatever that might be. Now, go make some disciples. Have a great week. We'll see you next time.